Hi, this is Ahmed Alogaili, Gorav Gil and Manos Brilakis, presenting case 171 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case that illustrates some of the challenges when we cannot advance a guide wire or a microcatheter or a balloon through a lesion. The patient was a gentleman who had exertional angina, normal ejection fraction, and was found to have a calcified uh, right coronary stenosis that could not be crossed with balloons. So he was referred to our institution for treating the right coronary artery. This is the coronary angiogram. We do have a fairly good sized RCA. There is uh, significant calcifications. We can see the outline of the vessel prior to contrast injection. And there are eccentric lesions in the distal right coronary artery, including quite close to the bifurcation between the PDA and the posterior lateral. And the same here on another view, two discrete lesions that seem to be heavily calcified. So the first step is to advance a guide wire. As you can see, we had planned for complex PCI. This is an eight friends AL1 guide that is deeply engaged into the vessel and as a result provides good support. And also we came in uh, strong with a microcatheter. But despite trying various guide wires, including workhorse wires, polymer jacketed wires like the Sion Black, Fielder XTA, as well as the Pilot 200, we were unable to cross through the RCA distal lesion. So what to do when the wire doesn't grow through a subtotal occlusion? Starting with the simpler things first, the first step is to change the band, putting a smaller or bigger band, and this is best done by using a microcatheter so that the position of the guide wire is not lost. The second is to change the wire completely, and the most commonly used ones are polymer jacketed wires such as the Sion Black, Field RFC, or sometimes some stiffer wires, but these are mainly used when it comes to CTO. Typically, we will use a polymer jacket that is soft, non-tapered, like the Sion Black, and then if it doesn't work, escalate to something stiffer, like the Pilot 200 or the Gladius Mongo. Support is critical, so using a microcatheter prevents the guide wire from bending and increases the penetration force of the tip of the guide wire, and also using a guide extension can have provide extra support. And finally, if everything fails, then CTO techniques can be used, such as the retrograde and the undergrade dissection and reentry. So we tried the microcatheter, we did try several guide wires, but once again, we had a lot of difficulty getting through this distal RCA lesion. Eventually, we switched for a dual lumen microcatheter that was a side branch close to the lesion. And then finally, after multiple attempts, using a Gladius Mongo wire, so now this is a polymer jacketed, stiffer tip guide wire, the wire eventually went into the posterior ladder. And this was confirmed. And yes, the wire is indeed through the lesion and is in the PL. Of course, when you have wire uncrossable, quite often, the lesion will be uncrossable with other devices such as microcasters and balloons. So in this case, the microcaster would not cross. And what do we do? The first step is a small balloon, potentially grenadoplasty, get better support, use various microcatheters, the wire cutting or puncture technique, puncturing the proximal cap. If it doesn't work, the laser quite often works. However, in our case, we have a polymer jacketed wire and there is the risk of melting, literally melting the coating of, this, of the wire. Therefore, that's not the best approach. Then one can do a therectomy if we can advance an atherectomy wire. And if it doesn't work, go to CTO extra plaque techniques. So we started with a small balloon. This is a Sapphire 1.0 by 15, and the balloon is stuck, cannot get through. We did use grenade it didn't work. We did bring a guide extension, a guide liner coast, quite deep down to the distal RCA. But despite that, and despite grenade plastic, we could not get through. We then tried a stronger microcaster. This is the Mamba Flex, which has a very strong construction and is unlikely to be damaged by calcium. And eventually we were able to get through the guide extension. If you can notice, it's almost all the way to the posterior ladder. 
Once this happened, then we were able to advance uh, a wire for a thorectomy. So this is the Viper Flex tip wire because it was obvious that this lesion was very challenging and delivering anything would have been very hard. And these are the lesions where a thorectomy is of primary importance. Both rotational and orbital atherectomy can be used. And this is the orbital atherectomy. This is with a new precision catheter, which is of particular importance here because we don't want the catheter to jump through the lesion and potentially go into a small vessel where it would cause dissection and or a perforation. So eventually we were able to modify the lesion. Then we were able to get the balloon and the balloon is expanding well. We did intravascular ultrasound that confirmed our suspicion that this was a calcified nodule. And then finally placed a long 48 millimeter drag gluting stand that was successfully post-dilated with a nice final result. So multiple lessons from this case. The first one is that going through a wire impenetrable, wire uncrossable lesion, there are multiple solutions. What worked in this case is the combination of a microcatheter, specifically a dual lumen microcatheter, along with a stiff tip polymer jacketed wire, the Gladius Mongo. When it comes to microcatheter uncrossable, which very often coexists with wire uncrossable lesions, then we did use several techniques, the small balloon, grenadoplasty, guide extension, but eventually we were able to get a strong microcatheter, the Mamba Flex through, and then did a therectomy, orbital therectomy, to prepare the lesion. After doing that, we were able to both deliver equipment, but even more importantly, to successfully expand the right coronary artery, with a nice result which was checked with intravascular imaging. This is critical to use intravascular imaging in such lesions because sometimes a suboptimal result may be difficult to see, especially with a significant calcification. Thank you.